Hello everybody and welcome to Attaché, the show that gets you in, out and around some of the world's greatest cities. My name is Alex Hunter and I'll be your Sherpa on this international adventure and today we're in Hong Kong. Hong Kong, an almost perfect fusion of East and West, modern and traditional, fast and slow. It's a global financial capital and a cultural powerhouse. It was also my home for 10 amazing years. In fact, I'd almost go as far to say, this is my favorite city in the world. And over the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you why. Sadly, the legendary Kai Tak Airport is now closed. So when landing in Hong Kong, you no longer scream over the rooftops of Kowloon, aim straight at a hillside before making a last minute 47 degree turn and praying you don't run out of runway. Actually, no, today it's rather sedate, but you are rewarded with an amazing airport. Hong Kong International Airport, or CLK as it's sometimes known, is a world-class, modern, efficient airport with some amazing amenities, including a nine-hole golf course and the only Michelin-starred airport eatery that I've ever heard of, Ah Fung's Delicacies, which is before security, so bring your friends. There's also a great hotel attached to the airport, so if you have a layover, even if it's not an overnighter, the Regal Airport Hotel is a fantastic place. They've got a gym which you can use, a spa with some outstanding treatments and six restaurants. So if you just need a place to relax and unwind between flights, this is the place to do it. Okay, so you've landed in Hong Kong. How do you get into town? Let's do the cheapest, fastest, best. The Airport Express, a dedicated high-speed rail link that takes you directly to Chim Sa Choi in Kowloon or Central on Hong Kong Island. 100 Hong Kong dollars and only 24 minutes. Again, the Airport Express. 24 minutes to get all the way from the airport into town on sleek, modern trains. You can buy your tickets right in the arrivals hall of the airport or when you get off at Hong Kong Station or Kowloon Station. Really, why are we even doing this? Look, there's only one good way to get from the airport into town, and that's the Airport Express. Taxis are expensive, Buses are slow and will only get you to the nearest MTR station. So just jump on the Airport Express, relax, watch the reruns of Just for Laughs, and you'll be in town in no time. As soon as you land in Hong Kong, it's worth getting one of these, an octopus card, Hong Kong's stored value transit system. Not only does it work on the MTR, buses, ferries, trams, light railways, but also at McDonald's, 7-Eleven, Starbucks, vending machines, even parking meters, as well as other convenience stores and shops. When you get to the airport, you can pick up a three-day Airport Express Octopus card, which will not only get you from the airport into town and back, but give you three days of unlimited travel on the MTR. And that's just 220 Hong Kong dollars, which is actually a pretty sweet deal. If you're flying on Cathay Pacific or a handful of other local airlines, you can check in and drop your bags off up to a day before your flight without even going to the airport. Hong Kong has arguably the best subway system in the world. The MTR covers most of Hong Kong Island, Kowloon, and even parts of the New Territories. It's cheap, spotlessly clean, and runs with extraordinary punctuality. Now, if you didn't get an octopus card, then I question your travel sanity, but your travel choices are your own, so weirdo. But if you do need a regular MTR ticket, you can get one at one of those ticket machines behind me. They only take cash, and your fare is determined by how far you're going. The MTR system, while expansive, is actually pretty easy to navigate. The map is reasonably self-explanatory, but what really throws people off is the sheer size of MTR stations. You can meander out of any old exit and be blocks away from your intended destination. So it's a really good idea to consult one of these exit maps to see which exit corresponds with where you actually want to go, and so you don't end up on the wrong side of a four-lane highway. Oh, and one other thing about the MTR, do not eat or drink on it. There's a reason why it's spotlessly clean. So don't crud it up with your coffee cups and your pixie sticks. Oh, and there's a $2,000 fine if you get caught. Taxis are everywhere in Hong Kong. They're clean, efficient, and pretty cheap compared to a lot of other big cities. But here's something unique about Hong Kong taxis. They're color-coded depending on the region they serve. You're most likely to see red taxis. They're the most prevalent. But blue taxis are limited to Lantau Island in the airport, and green taxis are limited to the new territories. This will only really be a problem at the airport when you have to pick which taxi line to go into. When in doubt, use a red taxi. There's a few things to remember about riding in a taxi in Hong Kong. You are required by law to wear your seatbelt, so buckle up. 
Some taxis take octopus cards and credit cards, so look for this sticker on the outside before you get in to figure out if yours does. And if you go from Hong Kong Island to Kowloon side or vice versa, the return toll will be included in your fare. So don't be surprised by that. You can hail a taxi the old fashioned way, grab one at a taxi rank, or actually even hail one with Uber, which also has a big presence here. But frankly, in this city of taxi ubiquity, if you can't find one the old fashioned way, I question your place in modern society. The MTR and taxis will zip you around Hong Kong quickly and easily. But if you have a moment, jump on the Star Ferry, even if you have no reason to cross the harbor. It's only 25 US cents for the 11 minute crossing, and you'll be rewarded with breathtaking views of Hong Kong. And maybe more importantly, a moment to just sit back and really appreciate this wonderful city. So I'm staying at the Hotel Icon in Chim Sa Choi, which is a great hotel in a great location. And one of the things that makes it a great hotel uh, is this. This is a smartphone that comes with your room, which is cool in of itself. But you also get unlimited data roaming. So you can go out into the city, you've got maps, you've got where to eat, which we'll tell you later. But you also get free local and international calls to 25 countries, unlimited. Now, I, I don't know about you guys, but I have never seen anything like that. So this is one of the coolest hotel features that I've ever seen. This is it, people. We are in the single greatest food city on the planet. Don't agree with me? Brace yourselves. We are going to go on a culinary adventure that is going to settle this once and for all. Quick, Greg, to the nearest McDonald's. Yes, we are going to McDonald's. Want to know why? Hong Kong has the cheapest McDonald's in the world. And they deliver. And they serve breakfast all day. This is a civilized city that doesn't put constrictions on my breakfast sandwiches. Now you tell me this isn't the greatest food city in the world. So the last time I got really bad food poisoning was in McDonald's in Hong Kong about 20 years ago. And it was eating one of these, a sausage McMuffin with egg. I laugh at you, food poisoning. As you guys know, everywhere in the world that we visit, we try something new at McDonald's. You have to see what Greg got. I got an Egg McMuffin because it's breakfast time and it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Look what Greg got. This is the black burger and it literally is. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna try it too. Oh, there's bacon. Oh my God. How do I even describe that other than black? But <laughs> black isn't a flavor. It's not bad. I'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't just stand around extolling the virtues of McDonald's while we're in the world's greatest food city. Let's eat! Eating out is part of Hong Kong life. There are restaurants, food stalls, markets, and snack shacks all over the place. 24,000 to be precise. Let's go find some great Hong Kong food. Ask me where the cheapest Michelin starred restaurant in the world is. Greg, ask me where. It's right here in central. Hong Kong, Tim Ho Wan is literally the cheapest Michelin starred restaurant in the world. Now, as you can see, crazy busy. And it's three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, so be prepared to wait. But I promise you, the wait is worth it. Now, if you're gonna order anything, make sure it's the barbecued pork buns. They are famous for them, and I cannot tell you how amazing they are. Everything there is good. Obviously, it has a Michelin star, but the buns, Now I asked our friends over on the Hong Kong subreddit of reddit.com what they would recommend that we absolutely not miss to eat while we're here. Number one answer, pineapple buns. Now, embarrassingly, despite being honorary locals, neither Greg nor I have tried these, and we're about to fix that right now. We've jumped in from a rainstorm into a, a, a bakery here in Wan Chai, and I'm told that these are supposed to have a, uh, oh, there's a pineapple bun, a stick of butter. And it actually, oh, look at that. Beautiful. Let's try this. Oh my God. Wow. Okay, Reddit, you were right again. This is amazing. So as you can see, this food segment is a little longer than the ones we've done in the past. But Greg and I are pushing through the meat sweats because this city has such a strong food culture and so many great things to eat that it would be an injustice for us not to work through this the searing chest pain that I'm experiencing. <laughs> and crack on and show you everything that this amazing city has to offer. So let's go check out what to eat in Hong Kong.
Greg, you okay, buddy? You, you need a minute? Just, just, all right, work through it, work through it. Do you like roast meat? Of course you do, don't be ridiculous. Allow me to present to you the single greatest collection of roast meats in the entire world. We're at Joy Hing in Wan Chai, home of another Michelin star restaurant. Who doesn't have a Michelin star in Hong Kong? I would strongly recommend either the, the char siu, the roast pork, the roast goose, or, what do you mean, or? All of it, just get all of it. Let them, let them bring you a plate of food and it will blow your mind. While we're talking about food, it's worth mentioning a few eating etiquette things while we're here. Like most of Asia, chopsticks are the go-to utensil. Now, no one's gonna laugh at your chopstick skills, but it's not cool to put your chopsticks vertically in a bowl of rice. It's reminiscent of the incense used at funerals uh, and it has connotations of death, so awkward. Also, don't use chopsticks to move non-food items around the table. Bowls, plates, phones, small children, that type of thing. Hong Kong uses the Hong Kong dollar, which is pegged to the US dollar. More on that in a second. Now, there are 100 cents in the dollar, but you're rarely going to see anything smaller than a $1 coin. 50 cents at a stretch. In fact, it's coins all the way up to $10 where these notes take over. As I mentioned earlier, the Hong Kong dollar is on a fixed exchange rate with the US dollar. So that means 10 Hong Kong dollars will always be $1.29 US. Hong Kong is often considered one of the most expensive cities on the planet. And there are parts that are excruciatingly pricey. Don't even think about buying property here. That said, there are parts that are relatively cheap, especially if you know where to look. Let's do the rundown. A cup of coffee will cost you around $28. A pint of beer will cost you around $60. And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, that'll cost you $18.80. And that, my friends, is the cheapest in the world. So you know how I always rib my American friends for their lack of chip and pin credit cards? I have good news. It won't make a lick of difference here in Hong Kong because they don't use the chip and pin system for credit card transactions. For anything over $200, you'll be asked to sign the back of a form just like in olden times. And they will compare the signature on the back of your card to what you write on the piece of paper. They won't ask for your ID. But despite that hoopla, credit cards are widely accepted here. But it is always a good idea to have a little bit of cash on you in case you stumble across the bargain of the century at one of the many, many, many outdoor markets here. Ah, tipping, our favorite subject. Dare we open this disgusting can of worms again? Yes, because we have to. But the good news is, tipping in Hong Kong is actually pretty rare. Visitors aren't expected to do it. Even in restaurants, it's rare. And in those few cases where it does happen, a 10% charge is automatically added to your bill. In taxis, just round up to the nearest dollar. In hotels like this, room service, 10 or $20. Porter service, 10 or $20. That's it. See, if we work together, we can get through anything. One more thing to remember, and I get asked this a lot. When you're paying for something with your credit card, you'll be handed the terminal and you'll see an option to pay in Hong Kong dollars or your local currency. Always choose Hong Kong dollars because then you'll get a rate that's negotiated by Visa and MasterCard through their network. If you choose your own currency, expect to pay three to 4% more on top of your local card's issuing fees. That is what we call a pro tip, people. Write it down. Hong Kong has some of the best shopping in the world. So if you have an hour or two and you need to smash through that shopping list, you've come to the right place. From open air markets to luxury boutiques, from brand new Ferraris to secondhand sex toys, Hong Kong has you covered. Now I'm not gonna tell you where to get your secondhand sex toys because I'm sure you have a favorite spot, but here are a few things you need to know about shopping in Hong Kong. Shops tend to open a little later here, around 10 a.m but they also stay open later at night, sometimes 10 p.m. or as late as midnight. Hong Kong has some of the highest commercial rent in the world, so you're actually less likely to find bargains in the ground floor stores because they have to cover crazy high rent. So if you want those deals, look up. So that's the attaché guide to Hong Kong. We're about to leave, which I'm very sad about, but if you've been here before and you think we've missed something, or you're living in this wonderful city and think there's something that every visitor needs to know, then don't forget to leave it in the comments below. As for me, I'm gonna get my pre-flight G&T. And until next time, take care. You got it? All right. Next shot.
everybody, and welcome to Attaché, the show that gets you in, out, and around some of the world's greatest cities. My name's Alex Hunter, and I'll be your Sherpa on this international adventure. And today, we find ourselves in Hong Kong. Did that look real? Are we good? Maybe we can just shoot the whole episode in the hotel. 